Hello. In today's video, we're going to be talking about electrochemical cells, um, and we're going to be looking at shorthand notation, half reactions, writing a um, electrochemical cell or galvanic cell, and looking at the movement of the particles within a galvanic cell. Okay, so an electrochemical cell is one that generates electrical energy from chemical reactions or facilitates chemical reactions through the introduction of electrical energy. So it's a combination of chemical and electrical energy. So we could either use chemical energy to generate electrical energy. or use electrical en energy to facilitate a chemical reaction. Okay, so our two major types of electrochemical cells are galvanic cells and electrolytic. A galvanic cell is where we have a spontaneous chemical reaction that produces electrical current. And this is a battery, basically. So batteries are galvanic cells. An electrolytic cell is the opposite of a galvanic cell. We have a non-spontaneous spontaneous reaction forced to occur by electrical current. And this is kind of, this is uh, how a b battery is charged. We also look at this for electroplating. Plating. Okay. So we are going to focus mostly on galvanic cells. Um, a galvanic cell has many different parts to it. Um, we have electrodes, salt, a salt solution, or two salt solutions, a salt bridge, and a metal wire. So our two electrodes are an anode and a cathode, and the electrodes must be made out of a metal or um, graphite. So it must be conductive. So generally this is going to be a metal but graphite also works. Okay. Um, the anode is the electrode where oxidation occurs. So the electrons are going to flow away from the anode. And then the cathode is the electrode where reduction occurs. So our electrons are going to flow towards the cathode. We also have two metal salt solutions, um, where the metal salts have the same metals as the electrodes, if uh, possible.
but not always. They do, however, contain the species that are being oxidized and reduced. We have a salt bridge that's there to help balance charge between the two solutions. And lastly, we have a metal wire which allows for the conduction of electrons. And more specifically, it allows electrons for f to flow from one half reaction to the other. Okay. So, our galvanic cells themselves. Um, are made by taking two electrodes and immersing them into salt solutions. So our salt solutions are generally in beakers. So they will hold our salt solutions, and those salt solutions will be involved in the redox process. Um, those two salt solutions are going to be um, kind of uh, combined um, or connected using two things, a salt bridge and a metal wire. So the salt bridge... We'll connect the two salt solution, the two salt solutions. And then a metal wire. Connects the two electrodes. Um, within a galvanic cell, one of the metals will be more easily oxidized than the other, or one of the species will be more easily oxidized than the other, so the electrons will spontaneously flow from one electrode to the other. And this causes oxidation and reduction to occur. This is what a galvanic cell would look like. So we see right here, we've got our two electrodes. In this case, we have a copper electrode and a zinc electrode. They're connected by our metal wire. And they're connected by our salt bridge. The salt bridge is there to equalize charge. The metal wire is there to move electrons from one half reaction to the other half reaction. So within a galvanic cell, we've got our oxidation and reduction halves separated from each other. 
um, and they're connected by a wire in order to harness that electrical energy. Then we see right here the lighting up of a light bulb because we have electrical current um, that's being produced during this process. Uh, when we look at this, we see that our zinc is our anode, so that's the species that is more easily oxide, oxidized, and our copper is our cathode, so that's our species that is more easily reduced. So here, our zinc is going to zinc 2 plus, and our copper 2 plus is going to copper. And this is our two half reactions here. So this is a oxidation half at our anode, and a reduction half at our cathode. Um, here is visually what that would look like. Um, and you can see here that there's a voltmeter. That voltmeter allows us to see the electrochemical cell potential between these two metals. Okay, so once we have a galvanic cell, once we know all the PC parts of a gal galvanic cell, we can write out what's called shorthand notation for that galvanic cell. So here is a reaction for a galvanic cell. We have cadmium reacting with copper 2 plus to produce cadmium 2 plus and copper solid. We could tell from cadmium going from cadmium elemental to cadmium 2 plus that it is losing electrons and the copper 2 plus going to elemental copper that it is reducing or gaining electrons. So our anode is where oxidation occurs. So going from our cadmium to our cadmium 2 plus, looks like this. And then our cathode is where reduction occurs. So this is our copper 2 plus going to copper solid. like so. Our overall cell reaction, we combine the two equations, making sure that we have balanced our electrons. Here we have two electrons produced from the anode, and then two electrons consumed by the cathode, so they will be canceled out, and we will combine them to produce this reaction right here. like so. Now, since we know what our anode reaction is, our cathode reaction is, we can write what's called shorthand notation. Shorthand notation, we start out with our anode, then we draw in our salt bridge, and then we draw in our cathode. So here we have cadmium solid, and then we produce cadmium 2 plus. <coughs> This line right here is a phase boundary. Which is written between a solid and another um, phase. And then a double line indicates our salt bridge. And then on the other side we're going to write our cathode. So we have Cu2 plus aqueous going to Cu solid. And again, we have another phase boundary because we're going from aqueous species to a solid species. So on your left side, you have your anode. On your right side, your cathode. So the assumption is the electrons are moving in that direction. So that's our electron flow. And that's how you write any one, making sure to include all the species that are involved in the redox process. Okay, so let's see how we're doing with this material so far. We want to sketch an electrochemical cell for the reaction described below. We're going to write half reactions, give the shorthand notation, identify the cathode, anode, and direction the charged particles are flowing. So we've got this reaction, and we've got these solutions. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to write our half reactions. So we have zinc solid going to zinc 2 plus and we have copper 2 plus 
going to copper solid. All of our elements are balanced, so we just need to add in electrons. So we add two electrons up here, and then two electrons down here. This top one is going to be an oxidation process. So this is our anode. And the bottom one is a reduction process. <coughs> so it is our cathode. Excuse me. We would write this shorthand notation. Anode on the left, cathode on the right. So we'd have our zinc solid phase boundary zinc 2 plus salt bridge copper 2 plus aqueous phase boundary copper solid on the outsides we see our electrodes and then we have again our anode on the left side cathode on the right side if we were to write this uh, electrochemical cell we're going to have I generally write my anode on the left cathode on the right but not necessary so we're going to have two beakers one of them is going to have zinc sulfate in it and one of them is going to have copper sulfate they are going to have electrodes within them The one on the left is a zinc electrode, the one on the right is a copper electrode, and they are going to be connected by a wire. And we're going to add in our salt bridge, like so. And you want to have um, species in there that aren't going to actually react, so I usually put a salt bridge that is a unreactive species that does not have um, one of our species that are oxidized or reduced. So I'm going to go, let's just go with Na2SO4. There it is, sodium sulfate. Unreactive, um, but it allows us to move charged particles to equalize charge. Now, our left side is our anode. Our right side is our cathode, and we know our electrons are produced at the anode and go to our cathode. So our electrons are going to move in this direction. And then we want to equalize charge, so we're going to push negative charge towards where electrons are coming from, push positive charge towards where electrons are going. So our sodium ions are going to go towards our cathode. Sulfate ions are going to go towards our anode. And that is everything. So we will continue on with the next video, our next lecture. And that's it for now.